Hi friends, I'm Katrina with Homegrown Florida where I show you how to grow, cook, and preserve from your southern garden. First things first, I want to thank Angela with the Inquisitive Farm Wife because she is hosting freeze-dried February, which is an awesome opportunity to see all kinds of ways that people use freeze-drying in their cooking or in their preserving. And make sure to hang out to the end because I'm gonna tell you about a really cool giveaway that she's doing all around freeze drying. And also a really neat playlist of a bunch of different content creators here on YouTube who are teaching you all about what to do with your freeze dried food. Last fall, I grew a ridiculous amount of squash, summer squash to be exact. It was Trombacino squash variety. Down here in Florida where I live in southern climates, we get a lot of humidity, we get a lot of heat, and that's not really conducive to growing good squash. <laughs> At least not any without a bunch of diseases and pests. So I have been on the hunt for a good squash for many, many years, and I finally found it. Trombacino squash is a variety that is a little bit different than what your typical squashes look like. This is a very, very large squash, and it is a vining variety, and it is part of the Machata family. Um, so it does tend to do well in a climate like mine. So well, in fact, <laughs> almost too well. In this last fall, I got 36 pounds of summer squash from this one little plant. Well, I wouldn't say little, it got quite big, but it was just one plant and 36 pounds. What am I gonna do with 36 pounds of squash? I was not prepared for the volume that I got, so I did a few things with it. I started by dehydrating some. Of course, we ate some fresh, I froze some, and then I thought, you know what? Let's freeze dry it and see what we can do with freeze dried squash. Now you can certainly freeze dry squash and then rehydrate it and eat it like fresh. But another thing that you can do with squash is you can freeze dry it, powder it, and use it as flour, which is exactly what we're gonna be doing with it today. So the first thing I did when I freeze dried my squash was that I peeled the squash and I sliced it into little half moons. Now the Trombacino squash variety doesn't have a lot of seeds in the center. Um, so if yours does, you may wanna cut those out because they don't um, freeze dry really well. So just scoop the seeds out or cut them and put them off to the side. Now my squash, I <laughs> froze and unfortunately I didn't have time at the moment to freeze dry them. I had some other batch in the freeze dryer so I just threw them in the freezer and I threw them in this huge chunk of squash. <laughs> so I had to let it thaw just a little bit in order to get the pieces to separate to lay onto my freeze drying trays. I did a couple other things with it because I didn't have a full load. You can see that my trays are quite um, empty. Uh, I've been on a freeze drying mission lately so I've had a ton of stuff that I've freeze dried and I'm down to the last little bit with this squash. So I placed my freeze dried trays in my freeze dryer and let the freeze dryer do the work. It did end up taking, I think about eight extra hours of freeze drying to get them to be completely done. And I always check my freeze dryers by weighing my trays. I have a small kitchen scale that I keep in the room where my freeze dryer is so that that way I can weigh the trays and then wait four hours and then weigh them again. And as long as they haven't gained or lost any weight, <laughs> then I know that they are dried enough at that point. Once I take the freeze dry trays out and they're done, I put all the slices of zucchini into my blender and I blend it down until it's a powder. I do seal it up, I vacuum seal it in a mason jar. You can definitely do a mylar bag, which is what I encourage you to use if it's gonna be long-term. But I knew that I was gonna be using this relatively quickly, so I didn't use an oxygen absorber and I did put it in a mason jar rather than a mylar bag, which is what um, the best method for long-term preservation is. Now, what I wanna test with this is can you use the zucchini flour to replace regular flour in recipes. So today we're gonna to be making a banana bread because I have some extra bananas and I don't want them to go to waste. And we're gonna use a third of the zucchini flour in the recipe to replace the all-purpose flour. This is my standard bread recipe that I use for any of the sweet loaves. Anything like banana bread, zucchini bread, cranberry orange bread, I use this as my base and I just replace the banana with whatever it is that is, um, I'm gonna use it with such, such as cranberries and orange juice or um, zucchini, shredded zucchini. 
But today we're gonna to be making the bananas. So the recipe calls for two cups of flour, but we're gonna substitute a third of that flour with the zucchini flour. So one third of two cups is actually two thirds of a cup. So I'm using my one third measure and I'm going to pour two of those in. Next thing we need is our all purpose flour. To make up the rest of the two cups, we're gonna use one cup of flour. And this is just an all purpose flour and a third. So one cup and one third. Next thing we need is one teaspoon of baking soda and then one fourth a teaspoon of salt. And then we need three fourths brown sugar. So I'm gonna use my one fourth measure and I'm gonna do three of them. And we're just gonna mix that up so that everything gets incorporated together. You can see a little bit of that green from that zucchini in there. That's kind of cool. We're gonna set this aside and we're gonna grab our other bowl because this is gonna be for our wet ingredients. We're gonna start with two eggs. Then we're gonna add half a cup of butter, which equals one stick. And this butter is softened, so it should blend up nicely. I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla. Even though the recipe actually doesn't call for it, I put vanilla in pretty much everything. And then our last step is our bananas. Now I have some frozen bananas here. They kind of froze and I defrosted them last night. So I'm just gonna pour those in there. The recipe calls for four to five bananas, and I only really have two right now. These were the ones that we didn't eat, and they've kind of gotten a little more ripe than what we like. So I'm gonna take these two and the ones that were frozen and use that. It's a great way to use up, you know, bananas that are about to go bad. And if you're not ready to make it, or maybe you haven't freeze dried your flour yet, <laughs> you can definitely just throw bananas in the freezer and come back to them later like I did here. They don't look especially appealing, but they work just fine. I've done it a number of times. <laughs> in fact, that's mostly how I make my banana bread is from frozen bananas. So I'm just gonna kinda mush these bananas up. They're very ripe, so they're really soft. And we're just gonna stick that in there. Now it's as simple as just mixing this stuff together. You can absolutely use a hand mixer, but I just don't feel like getting mine out. <laughs> now we're gonna grab our dry ingredients and we're gonna pour our wet ingredients right into our dry. And then mix that up really good. I'm gonna switch from my fork here because we have one final ingredient. This ingredient is totally optional, but this is uh, something that I absolutely love in my banana mixes, which is, pecans. You can use all kinds of nuts. I've used walnuts. I've even used almonds, but I particularly enjoy pecans. For me, it's like the sweet nut of all nuts. And so I am just taking some chopped pecans, about uh, half a cup, and we're going to mix that in. Before we get our pans ready and pour our batter into the containers, we're going to get our oven preheated to 350. Now I like to make my little breads in these little mini loaves. 
Uh, for one, it's just me and my husband here, and so we don't eat like a huge amount all at once. So what I like to do is I can make them in my little tins. We can bake them. We'll have one ready for today, and the two others I can stick in the freezer, or for a fun little crunchy treat, you can actually stick these in the freeze dryer, slice them up, of course, and then stick them in the freeze dryer, and you can have little freeze-dried snacks. I'm using a little cooking oil, but you could definitely use butter, lard, or um, olive oil to spray the bottom of the pan so they don't get stuck. And now we just have to simply add our batter to our little pans. I'm just gonna smooth it out so that we make sure that these are nice and level. This one's a little bit full, but that's okay. They are gonna puff up a little bit when they're baking. Now that our oven is preheated, we're gonna stick these little guys in. I do leave a tray in my oven so that that way if they puff up, then they won't spill all over the bottom of my oven. We're gonna let these bake for about 20 to 25 minutes for these little loaf pans, but if you have a regular loaf pan, it's probably gonna take somewhere around 60 to 75 minutes. So while we let our bread bake, let me tell you a little bit more about Freeze Dried February, which is hosted by our friend, the Inquisitive Farm Wife. She put together this collaboration so that lots of different content creators on YouTube can come on and every day you're gonna get a video about freeze drying. So it could be different recipes like we're doing today. It could be freeze dried recipes. It could be individuals, how to freeze dry say candy or strawberries, for example. Also how to maintain your freeze drying equipment. So make sure that you check out the playlist for hashtag freeze dried February so that you can see all the different videos that are coming out this month. And we're gonna have one every day of the week. And then the big finale is gonna be on March 6th at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on the Inquisitive Farm Wife's channel where she is going to be giving away some really cool stuff. <laughs> we have some really cool sponsors who are giving away lots of fun gifts from uh, Harvest Right, Avid Armor, Freeze Drying Supplies, and Four Jars, um, among several others actually. There's even more than that. And so in order to win, you need to go down and comment on one of these videos, one or several if you like. <laughs> As you're watching them, tell us what you enjoyed most about the video. And then on March 6th, Angela is gonna be doing a live video where she draws the winners of each one of the prizes. So you wanna make sure that you're there. So it looks like our banana bread is done. We're just gonna take a toothpick and check. I'm gonna poke. Just make sure that that comes out clean. I will say that the bread did seem to take a lot longer than what I've experienced in the past using the flour, using the zucchini flour. Usually these take me about 20 to 25 minutes, but this time it was more like 30 to 35 minutes. So take that into account. They do seem to take longer and they do seem to stay a little bit more moist longer than what I'm used to. We're gonna let these cool for a few minutes and then we'll pop them out of their little tins and we'll check to see how they taste. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit worried about halfway through the baking process that these guys were not turning out well because they were so moist, so wet inside of the oven. But man, they came out perfectly. Look at this. They're holding their shape well. They smell amazing <laughs> and you know, I can't tell just by looking at them that there was less flour and that I used the zucchini flour, but here's where the rubber hits the road. We're gonna taste it. So it's definitely still warm. <laughs> I should let it cool completely before I try it, but I just can't help myself. Wow. 
That's really good. You can't tell that there's zucchini flower in here. If that was your mission, just to use it as a flower substitute, man, that really works. It's got kind of a crispy caramelized outside. It's nice and moist, soft on the inside. It's holding together very well. Mm. Excellent banana flavor. <laughs> really good. Wow. That's exceptional. Work like a charm. So next time you get too many zucchinis in the garden, freeze dry it, powder it, and you can substitute this in with pretty much any recipe that calls for all purpose flour. Now I'm gonna set this right next to my flour so that way I don't forget to use it. And that will make sure that the flour that I do have, that I can stretch it out and add a little bit more nutrition to something that's a little bit decadent. Makes me feel a little bit better about indulging in something sweet. Thanks so much for joining me in my kitchen today. Happy baking and happy gardening, guys.